I saw a photograph on a newspaper there the other day and it was all about uh, a wood grain on a cabinet, on an antique cabinet and it had the shape of the Blessed Virgin and people were flocking to see it and I said, you know, is this only in Ireland or did this happen in other countries too? So I decided to do a little bit of investigation into what's called Marian apparitions where Our Lady appears to people and it would appear that the United States is the place of most apparitions, although very few, if any, are authenticated by the Vatican. Then we have the biggies then, the great ones like Lourdes, uh, Medjugorje, Knock in Ireland, and a few other ones. And they, uh, there's, uh, what strikes me is that there is a great similarity amongst all the apparitions. Insofar as, and I've collected a lot of material over the years on apparitions. The language is very, very limited. It's, it's almost the same, it's very, very repetitive. Uh, my son is crying, the devil is here, say the rosary, do penance, build a church, and on and on it goes. Now, you, you kind of have to question these things because so many people believe in them and put all their faith in apparitions. Now, the church, for very good reason, doesn't authenticate except very, very few out of hundreds, probably thousands of apparitions reported around the country. Then it goes from the sublime to the ridiculous where you have the Virgin appearing like on a piece of wood, uh, on a stain on the wall, Jesus appearing on the skirting board. And that's all over the So we have to be extremely careful and everyone has to be examined thoroughly to see if it's true. Is it an illusion? I know people get from us what they, what they need and a lot of times people in their lives need reassurance, reassurance that uh, God is there and he's looking after our, our interests, so to speak. So in 1985, the first phone call from England was made, mobile phone call. And here in Ireland, we were getting messages of more of a, a spiritual and supernatural nature. And it all began in Asdi in County Kerry when a young girl in February of 1985 said she saw an apparition of Our Lady. That was quickly followed by another one in Bally Desmond in County Cork. However, in July 1985 it really kicked off. And in Ballinspittle, County Cork, an observer claimed to have seen a roadside statue of the Virgin Mary move spontaneously. Similar occurrences were reported shortly afterwards in Mount Mellory, County Waterford here, and at 30 other locations around the country. Now, they were not all Marian uh, apparitions. Uh, I said some of them were of saints and that appearing on walls and on pieces of wood and all that. And thousands gathered at many of the sites to gaze in wonder and to pray. Now, the Catholic Church, as I said, for very good reason, uh, was very, very sceptical and said to people, look, don't be going there, don't be, you know, believe it. It's a personal revelation, is the way the Church puts it. It's a personal thing. It's not a revelation to the general uh, people, so to speak. Uh, so, some people up in Mellory claimed that the statue breathed and the hands moved from centre to right. Thousands visited the pilgrim, the, the pilgrimage. Thousands of pilgrims visited the grotto. In Waterford then, Waterford City, two young boys said that they saw the statue of the Virgin Mary outside the Mercy School up at Summerland move its eyes, which were full of tears and spoke of Pope John Paul II being assassinated. In 1981 there had been uh, a, an assassination attempt on the Pope, so certain people would call that a fulfilment prophecy that had already happened. And there had been an assassination attempt, as I said, on the Pope. Hundreds of people kept vigil at, at the one at the top of Browns Road here in the city, and it was being constantly stared at. Did it move? I'm not too sure whether it did or not. At Moonkine, County Kilkenny, several youths saw a statue move uh, from right to left. Apparitions took place at the Mallory Grotto over nine consecutive days from the 16th to the 24th of August 1985. One young girl said that Our Lady spoke of how God was angry and the world must change. 
If we don't change, she said, the devil will take over God's church in 10 years. Well, that information was a little bit too late because for hundreds of years, it's very well known by scholars and by clergy and by the Catholic Church were admitted the devil was in there a long, long time ago. Another said that the devil was in the crowd laughing while Our Lady was crying. The local papers reporting on the incident said that cars extended from the grotto for about six miles. It is still a great place to pilgrimage. I was only up there myself there last year and they've done an absolutely brilliant job on it. Uh, complete with pathways, tiles, excellent. Worth a visit. It's a nice, nice kind of peaceful place. Now, during this time, there was another one out of Dunkit on the, on the, the, the water of the Kilkenny Road before the M9. And I was in a certain pub and a woman came in and said the statue was after moving. And the publican said to her, couldn't have, he said, I didn't connect the wires yet. And when she was gone, he turned to me and said, if I had known this was going to go on, he said, I would have had the only Virgin Mary in Ireland doing the huckle book. Uh, but and on and on it went. It very quickly faded away again uh, by the end of the year, 1985. But what's to be made of the apparitions? And as I said, according to the Catholic Church, the era of public revelation, that's when God revealed through prophets and that, ended with the last apostle, who was the Apostle John. A Marian apparition, if deemed genuine by the church authority, is treated as a private revelation. The Vatican has officially confirmed the apparitions at Guadalupe, that's in Mexico, in Lourdes, Fatima uh, and Nock. Now, there was another one in Garabandal and uh, that girl eventually left and went to America. Uh, I only watched a video on her last night and she said that the Blessed Virgin told her that in Garabandal was going to be a spectacular event and it would be permanent and would be there for all time. But what struck me was this, was that how come none of the, none of the other apparitions are mentioned Garabandal, saying like, this is only here now, but the, the biggie is going to happen in Garabandal. Medjugorje is another place, and there's more or less five things that people are asked to do. Uh, take the Eucharist, go to confession, uh, pray, uh, say the rosary. And really, these are things that priests are saying every Sunday at Mass. But, you know, people take away from these what they need in their lives. Uh, but sometimes it actually descends to the farcical, the Father Ted. And in 2009, in the town of Ratkeel in County Limerick, two workmen were cutting down a tree. And they couldn't cut it straight, so to speak, and they cut it at an angle. And they said they examined it and what appeared to be a woman was on the tree, the, the imprint of a woman. And it was examined more closely. It was the Blessed Virgin, they said. Hundreds and hundreds flocked to see Our Lady on a piece of wood. Last year, up in Killarney, a fellow, an antique dealer, bought a, a cabinet, an old antique cabinet, for 300 euro. And he put it out in his window because there was, there was little kind of little panels in it that he was able to store stuff in, other stuff in, and he thought it was great, a great display. He didn't realise that people began to flock, looking in the window, coming into the shop, that the, the grain on the, the front of the cabinet looked like the Virgin Mary. So, like, these are kind of farcical things. But it has changed, whereas before, I believe, Back up to 1985, it was real pious. People, in their piety, believed that Mary was appearing to them. One of the oldest, and whatnot, one of the first apparitions in the world was down in Guadalupe in Mexico. I think that was in the 1500s. But it has descended again, as I'd say, into farce. Because in Guadalupe, uh, Mary is the patron saint of, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe is the patron saint of Mexico. She's also uh, seen as a great uh, pro-life uh, person, okay? But now she's also have been taken on by the unions, by feminists, and of late, anybody watching any videos or documentaries on the drug trade down in Mexico, you will see all these drug dealers with Our Lady of Guadalupe tattooed on their backs. 
So she is now the patron saint of drug dealers and drug cartels. Very interestingly, in Islam, Mary is venerated as the mother of Jesus. In fact, there is much more in the Quran than there is uh, in, in, the, in the Christian Testament, New Testament, about Mary. Now, you're going to say, how do you know that? Yeah, did you get that on Wikipedia? No, I didn't get it on Wikipedia. I have here a Quran, which I got a present of in 1984. And it's, in, it's chapter 19 in that. Uh, it's called, and it's actually, the name of it in Arabic uh, is Miriam bin Ibrahim. Uh, so that's Mary's father. So Mary and mention her father. So there's other things then that are disturbing and I picked up a few of them in, in various churches and that were slipped in. The priest didn't put them there. Other people came in and put them in. And that is one that on, you know, these two of these now are related to so-called apparitions in Ireland. One says that uh, the 25th of December 1985, Our Lady appeared to a girl and told her, this, today is my son's birthday. Now, if you, any biblical scholar worth the salt will tell you the 25th of December is not the birthday of Jesus. Uh, nobody knows when it was. But in actual fact, if you want to go to online, you will get the, the Catholic Encyclopedia and it tells you all the history of the 25th of December, where it came from, how early and how late it began to be as um, a, a ca an in the liturgical calendar, so to speak. And that more than likely the 25th of December was borrowed from the pagan worship of the sun. Uh, another one then that I read and I have it here it says about uh, promoting some extreme views that to take communion in the hand is sacrilege and that Our Lady said that and you have to be what Our Lady says. It's ignoring the historical fact that in the Gospels, pick it up and read it, that at the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and broke it. It would have looked like sort of like a pit of bread. He broke it. He didn't say, open your mouth, stick out your tongue and I put this in it. He broke it off, tore it off and handed it to people. So for me, it's a fascinating subject, fascinating subject, uh, but it all has to be tested to make sure that it's credible because so many people are led and said, as they say, by their beliefs without checking it out as a fact. Go to your local priest, he'll tell you exactly the same. Now, I didn't realise, and a friend of mine, Joe Tobin, last night, sent me a lovely video of himself singing uh, about Our Lady. Uh, I can't remember the name of the hymn. Did a great job, and thanks, Joe. And he reminded me that this month, coincidentally, is the month of Mary. So listen, have a lovely month, and I'm sure many will have statues of Our Lady up around. Enjoy. Talk to you soon.